Hello everyone, um, so I'm going to talk about consumer psychology and viral content. First of all, why would you even consider psychology in building viral content? The most important thing is to understand uh, about it's about human perception. Now, first of all, uh, we have two main layers of the brain. Obviously, there's more, but the two main that uh, you would be considered with are the subconscious brain and the conscious brain. The subconscious brain is able to process 11 million bits of information per second, whereas the conscious brain can barely manage 40 bits. There's no other zeros behind that. It's just the 40. Now, this is the reason why we are able to process millions and millions of little pieces of information every day from, um, you know, from what uh, is happening on the street while you're walking around so you can navigate very quickly to the sounds that you're hearing, the smells and everything else. Now, the reason uh, why then subconscious brain uh, is going to be much more important for you in uh, creating viral content is that it actually decides on majority of the things that we do uh, and that we choose. Um, or at least uh, what is happening on our subconscious brain is influencing majority of our decisions uh, very strongly. Now, what that simply means is we really need to speak much more to that subconscious brain as opposed to necessarily to the conscious rational part um, of, um, of who we are. But a few most important things that I really want to talk to you about is uh, to, about understanding around emotions. So, first of all, um, you know, we, we all know that we need to create amazingly emotional content to get it viral. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that simply means um, for our brain. Now, another thing that I will mention is around, um, um, is around who would be the type of person that would help you create the content that's more viral and who would be the type of person that will basically share that content so it becomes the, the viral content. And then the last but not least, um, we'll, I'll talk very briefly about involvement uh, of your audience because that is also another prerequisite to the virality. Now, let's first talk about the emotions. Uh, now, this is one of your biggest, strongest ingredients um, over here. Now, what is important about emotions is to, first of all, understand that they are prerequisites to any automatic behaviors and more calculated decisions and, frankly, any kind of decisions. It's not that we immediately behave or not that we immediately make a decision. Uh, the emotion uh, or generally all of the different affective states, because emotions are one of the different affective states that we have. We have also things like moods uh, that are completely different than emotions. Uh, we also have evaluative uh, feelings that are basically judgments that are emotionally charged judgments of products, people, situations, or anything like that, which we also should consider it in creation of the viral content. But the emotions are the strongest element. They happen extremely fast, within a second max, and then they disappear. They are extremely intensive. They are the most uh, intensive affective states, and that's why they also have the strongest impact on our memory and also on our attention. Two things that are extremely important, attention and memory for creation of any viral content for engaging any type of customer. Now, the reason why uh, emotions and memory are so tied together, especially the actual emotions, which are very fast and extremely intensive, and then they pass on, is that the part of the brain responsible for processing emotions is the neighbor to the part of the brain responsible for processing uh, memory and for storing it and anything like that. But in terms of the emotions and memories, uh, what we need to remember is that the emotions need to be quite strong, quite intensive. So they actually should be emotions, not moods, not evaluative states or anything like that. Um, so we need to really kind of focus on uh, creating a few, but not a lot, a few intensive emotions throughout our viral content. Now, the thing to really consider is that your emotions need to be consistent with your key brand emotions. So that's what I call 
the few very important emotions or generally affective states that you want associated with your brand that generally are a form of an emotional benefit that your customer gets out of your brand. If you're not going to produce uh, those types of emotions or at least a smaller building blocks, uh, um, sort of emotional building blocks of those key brand emotions, then you're running into uh, a risk of creating content that isn't consistent with your main brand strategy. Another thing outside of making sure that it's consistent with your brand strategy uh, and therefore your key brand emotions is to consider what kind of emotions you actually need to trigger, you need to evoke in people's brains to achieve particular automatic behaviors. So those that are extremely subconscious that just happen, um, such as, you know, a person presses the buttons, turns right, um, you know, whatever, like those kind of things, presses like, uh, that kind of elements, they're quite automatic. They don't demand a lot of uh, actual conscious thinking. But as well, what type of more conscious decisions do you need to consider? Do you want your customers to do? Because your emotion, as I said, is a prerequisite to those automatic behaviors and to that conscious decision. So you need to then consider, um, first of all, those kind of objectives. What do you want uh, to affect in terms of those behaviors and those decisions with your viral content? That's kind of the, the key to consider. And there's lots of different tactics to enhance um, uh, emotions uh, and to actually evoke them within any kind of viral content or anything like that. Um, but one of the most simple ones is to use basically emotional contagion. Um, yeah, I know it sounds like a virus, but it's kind of, you know, that's how our brain reacts. We have this gorgeous mirror neurons um, in our brain that basically as soon as we see an emotion on someone's face, like an amazing joy and laughter or pure sadness or anything like that, our brain naturally starts feeling a little bit like that and you will notice that even your facial um, expressions are starting to mimic uh, those emotions just a little bit and it's enough that you have just a little bit to influence uh, that brain but obviously if you're going to then crescendo sort of intensify that emotion throughout your viral content like some of the amazing ads are doing like you know, a lot of the um, recent kind of Christmas John Lewis ads are, for example, doing really good job in sort of strengthening the same type of emotion, but by using different emotional building blocks of that bigger uh, emotion or that bigger affective state. Um, so that kind of, you know, will definitely help you. That's the major thing. Now, who are you then uh, going to use to help you build viral content and who is that people that need to kind of share it? Now, there's a few different kind of personality characteristics um, and other sort of individual differences to consider. But the most important thing is the people that actually need to be in charge uh, need to be, let's say, the influencers or the actors or, um, you know, celebrities should be internal locus of control uh, should have an internal locus of control what that simply means is that people with internal locus of control believe that everything and anything that happens in their life is because of them they are the reason to create their success they are the reason to create also their failures um they are in charge they are in control whereas people with an external locus of control uh, so the other side of it and we sort of are kind of on the line uh, across that internal and external usually but those that are much closer to the external locus of control believe that anything and everything that happens to them is because of external forces that could be luck god uh, other people government or anything along these lines now people with internal locus of control are considered leaders and innovators um, if you look at the diffusion of innovation scale, they are much more likely to be um, the, you know, the actual innovators or early adopters. Um, they are the ones uh, that, you know, that actually have, um, you know, have been shown in research uh, to be uh, much more innovative uh, in terms of new ideas or accepting new trends um, or actually 
also being treated as leaders uh, in their groups, in their social groups. So consider those types of people. Uh, now, the easiest way to sort of understand it is if they talk a lot more, uh, you know, in the first person. So. I did this, I have achieved it, it is because of me, I have done it. That kind of language will also naturally attract those individuals at the beginning. So you can also consider, for example, changing your captions, um, you know, around your content at the beginning to attract that group of people. Uh, and then later on, uh, because the external locus of control individuals are much more of a followers and you need them as volume to build up the virality, you will therefore start changing um, the, you know, the captions and the communication more to do with we and, um, you know, without kind of using I or you kind of language. So it's not uh, you can do it, for example, but it's, you know, uh, everything is here to, um, you know, to help. Uh, and, you know, we are here to, you know, to work with you and things like that. So uh, very much kind of focusing on uh, more you as a brand being in charge or the community being in charge. Now, very quickly, make sure that your content has a form of an involvement. Um, more importantly, even better yet, if it includes aspects of co-creation or user generated content campaigns. Uh, because that involvement is obviously what uh, will kind of build up the attention, first of all, to your content, second of all, the engagement that needs to happen, and then third of all, the actual action, um, you know, that they need to take. And once they take an action, they also take an ownership over that content and they feel much more likely to share it along. But more importantly, they feel ownership and impact over your brand. So they're connecting much more strongly with your brand. They're connecting stronger with the community of your brand. And therefore, they're also much more likely uh, to, you know, and much more inclined to share a positive word of mouth about your brand, i.e. creating uh, more virality around your content. Now, obviously, this is superbly introductory element and there's lots more to consider, especially around playing with the different tactics to influence the subconscious brain. So feel free to drop me a line at kate at humanizing-brands.com. Um, uh, it was lovely to talk to you. Um, and uh, you can also find us on LinkedIn and on Instagram if that's an easier form for you to connect. Have a great rest of the conference. Take care. All the best. Bye.